When it comes to posture, the vast majority of humans will prefer to position themselves over their right side. This is due to normal human asymmetry of the brain and body. Uh, this has been observed in classical sculpture like the David statue, or if you just go to the park on a day where people are not consciously engaged in something, they're just kind of hanging out while they stand up, most people will be shifted, their body weight will be slightly to the right because the midline of the human body is to the right, it's not in the middle because of this human asymmetry. It, that's all normal stuff. Those things that you see there are completely normal. What's not normal is when you see it in the opposite direction. And that's where people get confused because they'll think that uh, this, th they might be left dominant rather than right dominant, but they're not. But they are still with a pel with an underlying pelvis pattern and body pattern uh, that ex is explained by right dominance. It's just that for a variety of reasons, they may have started to kind of get pushed over to their left side, but it's not a conscious choice. The Postural Restoration Institute has labeled this right dominance, the left AIC, right BC, right TMCC pattern. It's simply just, a, again, a description of right dominance. I'm going, so I'm going to demonstrate three different scenarios. This left AIC pattern with a pelvis that's oriented to the right. Then I'm going to demonstrate the left AIC pattern with a pelvis that's oriented to the left because the pattern and orientation are not the same thing. And then I'm going to show uh, a left AIC pattern with uh, a lean to the left. And that is what gets so troublesome when it's coming from the cranium, coming from the visual system and the jaw or the teeth. And again, that's my story. I've lived it and it's misery. And if you are in that situation, you do not want to get these concepts confused because it might lead you down the wrong path. So before I do the demonstration, just a, a note about the two words that I'm using. Uh, the word pattern, let me just read the, the uh, definition of pattern. Uh, a pattern is something that happens or is done in a predictable and recurring way. This pattern, this left AIC pattern is predictable because humans are right dominant, okay? Thus, humans generally like to be over on their right side because they're right dominant. That is the pattern because of how the brain and the body are function and are uh, assembled. Now, the word orientation is a little bit more confusing because you have orientation, compensation, twisting, turning, all these different, <laughs> all these different words. And it can get confusing even within post restoration. You might hear different therapists describe it different ways. I'm using the word orientation. The overall body and brain are oriented to the right. I'm specifically talking about the pelvis that can then kind of get put into a more leftward rotated, but I'm just going to say the word oriented state because I'm using the word like this, the relative physical position or direction of something. So when I say orientation of the pelvis simply means the position in which it's directed or facing. All right. So just because I know it can get confusing with the terms. Here is the establishment of the normal left AIC pattern. You have this inherent right dominance with the bigger right diaphragm and this respiratory breathing influence and how the brain is organized and even the structure of the brain itself, the right hemisphere and the left hemisphere are not physically the same and they have different, lots of overlap, but have different functions. Because of that, humans like to shift over to the right, which brings the left side of the pelvis forward, right side slightly back compared to the left, Right shoulders like to drop, left shoulders like to come up, right heads like to come up. This is all normal right stance activity. When someone walks into, into, uh, into my office and this is what they look like when they're standing, maybe not so exaggerated, but this is what they look like, I'm fine with it. I have no issues with that. That's normal right-sided, right dominance, left AIC activity. When I ask them what they'll feel in their mouth, they'll usually say they feel the right molars more than their left. They'll probably say, oh, I feel my weight more on my right foot. They'll probably say they feel their left, their, I'm sorry, their right heel. They'll probably say they feel their left arch. Those are all great answers. It's completely normal, and I love seeing that. If you're interested in the science of human asymmetry and the science of postural restoration, I do have a free download on my website. Uh, the link is in the description, and you don't even have to leave your email address. You can just download it, read it. It's about a 10-page PDF, and it just gives you further background uh, about what this is all about. This orientation of the pelvis means which direction is the pelvis uh, oriented, facing, 
That's not the same as pattern. The pattern is this. Orientation can be this, 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 this. That's all orientation. 90% of the time with a left AIC patterned pelvis, the orientation of the lumbar spine and the pelvis is to the right as we shift to the right and then twist from here up to come back to the center. Sometimes because of how people compensate, because of scoliosis, because of uh, instability in their lumbar spine, maybe they stretched out ligaments that support their pelvis and support their lumbar spine to the pelvis. A lot of anterior hip instability. They might lock out their knees. They might jut their head and neck forward. They might have had shoulder injuries. And yes, they might have jaw or visual issues, which was certainly my case. That can create a situation where the left AIC pattern is there, but the orientation doesn't look like it's to the right. You might, it might look like when you look down, it might look like your right side is forward. It's not forward. It's oriented forward, but the pelvis is still forward on the left, relatively speaking, compared to the right. So left AIC pattern and orientation are not the same thing. And that's something that people really get confused about. And it makes them think they're an opposite pattern and they're not. Now, what about people who look like they're on their left leg? Like this picture of me in my worst days. If you look at that picture, you might say, eh, Neil's on his left leg. He's, he's must be a different pattern. Wrong, 100% wrong. I am still in a left AIC pattern. Whether you realize it or not, or anyone out there realize it or not, you have to test me. It goes by the tests. With a left AIC pattern, a right leg will adduct, the left leg will not adduct. That's the image. That's it right there. You don't find it the other way around. Not, ask any PRI therapist. You haven't found it the other way around. So you can't be a different pattern. You're not going to come in as a right AIC pattern. You're a left AIC pattern because it's called right dominance. That's not changing. That's going, not going away because someone wants it to go away. We need to establish a right AIC pattern. I know that and the names can get confusing. And I remember when I was first started taking these courses, I was thoroughly confused. You're in a left AIC pattern. It's called right stance. It's called, well, when you're walking, it's called right stance, left swing, phase of walking. We need to teach people to establish the opposite, a right AIC pattern, meaning the pelvis needs to turn to the left and go back on the left. Not orient there, but reverse the pattern because you could orient there through compensation. And now you're like, huh, I feel like I'm on my wet left leg, but your pelvis is still forward on the left. You wouldn't be contacting me or anybody else for help if, that was this, if you were actually on your left leg with your left hip back because that is what we have to learn how to do to establish normal left stance. That ain't what's happening. So we got a left side forward, a right side back. Normally, you're shifted to your right, but some people will look like they're shifted over to their left. What they're really doing, like I was, but what they're really doing is falling to the left. There's sensory confusion. It could be major instability. And you know what? For a lot of people, when the cranium is involved, there is a lot of instability, but they're falling to the left. They are, they are using the ground underneath their left foot to keep their pelvis oriented to the right. That's what I was in. That's what people are in. Now, how else can someone uh, end up in that position? Vision and jaw and teeth. So watch. When I put my, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to stand centered. <clears throat> my left foot is slightly behind my right, which is desirable. All right, but watch what happens if I move my jaw to the right. I just went to the left. Now, I'm neutral, I'm stable. So if I do that, my left hip will move back slightly. That's true, that's true shifting. People in this situation, they're not doing true shifting. If their jaw is to the right, that's a cranial strain pattern. I've talked about this so many times on my YouTube channel. Cranial strains, their jaw is inappropriately to the right, which pushes them, makes them fall, to the left. That is a fake left stance. They are not in nowhere close. They are in pain. They have weird symptoms. They are nowhere close to being in true left stance. 
They are not stuck on their left side. They are falling there because something is pushing them there, but their pelvis never turned to the left. They're probably locking out their left knee. Their left lower back is gonna be overarched. They're not on their left leg. They're, they're falling left. Maybe they're leaning on it, but it's just fake. So an inappropriate jaw position to the right could shift you left. What else could? Well, what if you have a dominant left eye and you like to look with your left eye? Well, there you go. What if you uh, have a open bite on the right side and so when you bring your teeth together, you feel more to the left. Well, watch what happens when I bring my teeth together on the left. I go to the left because there's an open bite. But if I bring my teeth together on the right, I should go to the right. But some people who have open bites on one or both sides, they don't have equality of bite on both sides. So the jaw muscles and the neck muscles become overactive and could put them into another fake left stance position. Craniums drive the show. Now, besides a dominant left eye, maybe a dominant left ear, maybe being left-handed could throw a little bit more torque into the body so that body shifts a little bit to the left. Again, underneath, you're still the same old pattern. Vision. So you're going to see a video of me, and you're going to see that in, narrow, in a narrow room when the, wall, when the wall is close to me on the right side, now, this is not going to be found in most people. This is not normal. But a lot of people who are in a lot of pain and tension are in not normal situations, which then all bets are off the table. They're still going to be the left AIC. But how you treat them and help them make be differently is going to, probably going to be different than the 80 to 90% of other people that walk in the door. So in this video, I'm standing. My eyes are closed. You'll see the wall is right next to my right side. When, my, when I open my eyes, my head tilts up on the left, my obvious head tilt. That is the same position you saw in this picture. That's me. That's how I was living. Now, here's the interesting thing. I was living like that since I was a kid. Since, yeah, since I was like six or seven. Now, all I had to do is open the door, and then I'm going to stare at the vertical lines. My eyes are still closed. But then when I open my eyes and I stare at the vertical line, of the door, my head does not tilt. So my brain did something. It's latching on. And this verticality issue is a known thing in the human visual system. Humans like to perceive vertical objects. Did my brain somehow, in, the, in, in this video, because of the narrow, I hate narrow spaces. I've always known my back gets tight in narrow space. I might not be able to touch my toes in a narrow room, and then I go into a bigger room, I can touch my toes. Well, the same thing would happen with the head tilt. And I, it, it took me a long time to put it together. But realize, something happened at a young age that put my head into a fake left position. And my entire life revolved around that. All my athletic development, my speech patterns. I went through puberty around that. I went through my growth spurts around that. I lifted weights in that position, in a obviously compromised position. No wonder my SI joints broke down. But my lower body, my, from here down where I had all my symptoms, the plantar fasciitis, the shin splints, the SI joints, the, the, the SI joint blowouts for 14 years, the neck spasms, the generalized back pain, I, it was misery. And none of it had to do with my lower body. It was all coming from up here because of this fake left position, which is neurosensory. The physical body, the, the biomechanics, don't make me ill by mentioning biomechanics when you have a head in that position. This is not a biomechanical issue. And that's what I'm trying so desperately for people to understand. When you see abnormal patterning, what you think is abnormal, it's just abnormal. <laughs> it's not a different pattern. You just have other stuff going on. If you treat, if you think you're something different, you're going to go down the wrong road, uh, which is fine. You can do whatever you want, obviously. But I'm just telling you how it is from a postural restoration perspective, from a personal perspective, who've li who has lived this experience, and someone who's practiced postural restoration for 14 years, you're not going to have a left dominant human lie down on your table. It's not going to happen. The testing will always come out the same. You might see some discrepancies in, in neck ranges of motion and shoulders, but underlying in that pelvis, in that, where, that orient, where that bigger right diaphragm is, that's not going to be different. So... Hopefully this video has helped uh, clear up some uh, lingering issues 
about whether there are other patterns or not. 